I've been making my own Mario Maker fan game named Super Smashy Maker, and for this video I added a lot of cool parts like culligans and geysers. Let's check it out, but before we do, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Let's go! A cool enemy we've seen in a lot of Mario games is the Fire Snake, which originated in Super Mario Bros. 3. To remake him, I started off with his head, after which I added his hot body parts. They of course all needed a small animation, as well as a damaging hitbox. Then I added the coat which made all the body segments follow the head, to actually make it a snake, after which I added his jumping behavior. The fire snake will always jump towards Mario too, which makes him a pretty dangerous enemy, but we can make him even more menacing by adding another one of his abilities, the growing ability. This power makes the fire snake grow after a couple of bounces for a short period of time. My first attempt in adding this feature made him grow and shrink continuously, not good. My second attempt though, was more successful. The fire snake can now grow, stay that size for a short period of time, and then shrink again. Pretty cool. I also added in a yellow variant which jumps a bit higher and further. Now this was supposed to be the golden variant, but I totally forgot that when making it, so it will most likely end up leaving a coin trail behind instead of jumping higher. Let's switch from hot to cold and talk about the Cooligan. This classy penguin enemy, which finds its origins in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, is pretty unique and had to be added to Smashy Maker. First off, I added the sprite and made it possible to jump off of his back, as well as a painful hitbox. Then I started adding his behavior, beginning with his movement. The Kulugan slides over the ground and turns around if he hits a wall. But unlike most other enemies, he has to be jumped on twice to be killed. The first time you jump on him, he slows down significantly, like you can see here. The sprites and animations also have to correspond with this, so I added animations for normal sliding and slow sliding. This already looked way better. But if you watch closely, you can see that the Culligan's glasses just disappear. To add some more detail, I made sure it falls off when jumped on, instead of just popping out of existence. First, the glasses fell like this, but with some more refining, they started rotating too and looked quite alright. Of course, after the second hit, the Culligan needs to die. When that happens, its hitbox and collision need to be deactivated, which I didn't do here. Looks like he's having a good time though. After that was fixed, the Culligan could be fully eliminated. Oh, and I also added some flying animations for when the enemy is not touching ground. The next course part I really wanted to see in Super Mario Maker 2 were these spinning bill launchers. As we know they weren't added so I tried to recreate them, but first I added in the normal bill launchers because it would be weird to add the spinning variant first. Luckily that was done in no time. The spinning launcher took a bit more time to rebuild. It can exist out of two parts, a launcher segment and a spike pillar segment which can hurt Mario when touched. Putting some of these together creates a cool looking launcher, but it doesn't do anything yet. So I started creating the turning animations for launcher segments and writing the code to shoot the bill bills in the right direction. Well, first attempts don't always go as planned, okay? Luckily my second attempt went better and the bills got shot in the right direction. The builder of the stage can customize these launchers too. They can choose the height with a minimum length of 2 and a max length of 12, just like the normal ones. They can choose the initial direction of each launcher too. I can trust you guys not to do some little timmy activities with this, right? I was pretty happy with how it turned out, what do you think? Next to rotating launchers, rotating cannons exist too. Just like before, I added normal cannons first, which was pretty easy. Remaking the actual rotating cannon was also not too hard. First I made the cannon rotate in brief intervals. The builder can decide to make it rotate left or right. Then I added its main feature, shooting cannonballs. After each rotation, the cannon will shoot 4 cannonballs into their corresponding direction. I also added the red variant of it. This one shoots the faster red cannonballs of course. I was hesitant on making the cannon itself rotate a bit faster as well, but ended up not doing that since it might make it a bit too OP. Pipes are seen in almost every Mario game, and a special type can be found in New Super Mario Bros. 2, the power-up pipe. To work, Fire Mario needs to shoot a couple of fireballs inside of one side of the pipe. I got some pretty amazing sprites, together with the sign to make it complete. Without any code though, the fireballs get stuck on the pipe and do not disappear. Let's fix that. Yeah, that already looks way better. When a fireball is consumed, a coin pops out of the pipe too, but not like this of course. They should probably fall down, so I gave them some gravity and they behaved a bit better, but not as intended just yet. Real quick, don't forget to subscribe because only 15% of people who watch these videos are actually subbed. It helps me out a lot and you can always unsubscribe later. So I increased the power with which they get launched out of the pipe and added RNG to determine to which side they get flung. After a while, they also start despawning, just like the original. Before I worked on the power-ups, I made sure this pipe could be configured in all directions. But then the coolest part of these pipes, the power-ups. After 10 fireballs, a chosen power-up pops out. There were a couple of things that had to be fixed here, 
Electric spawning and limiting the amount of spawn power-ups to just one. Because we don't want to see this, right? After some more coding, I made the Mega Mushroom grow out of the pipe like this, which looked quite alright. And there could now only be one power-up spawned, after which the exclamation block turns great to let us know the pipe has served its purpose. This also works with stars and one-ups. Maybe more power-ups will be added in the future too. Mario games are full with different types of geysers, which are either helpful or harmful. I decided to add some to Super Smash Maker as well. I started with probably the most common one, the water geyser. I began with giving it some animations, to make it a bit more dynamic. They can also go pretty high like you can see here, and the height can be decided by the builder of the stage. Mario can of course stand on top of them just like a regular platform, but he can also jump into it from below. As I have not added water physics to the game, he can't swim just yet, so as a prototype mechanism, I made him rise to the top whenever he is inside of the water. Well, let's not make him rise that fast. I lowered the speed and got a better result. I also added a small hop whenever he exits the water from the top, which made it feel a bit better. Then I added some cool customization options. You can make the geyser either stay idle, move up, move down, or fluctuate up and down. The lava geyser is not as friendly as a water geyser. Okay, maybe here it still is because I only changed the sprites, but hold on. As normal Mario, you will not be able to stand on top of these geysers unless you're wearing the dry bone shell. So for now, just pretend Mario is wearing one here. But if not, this happens. He insta dies. Next to that I added the poison geyser, which I don't think ever existed. This one works like the lava geyser, but can be used for even more customization. And last but not least, the sand geyser. This one works a bit like the water geyser, but makes Mario slow down significantly when rising up. Now these geysers can all be stood on in some way, so I also added some variations where that's not possible. But watch out because these are even more deadly. The flame jump is another quite unique enemy. This guy flies after Mario while also shooting fireballs his way. So first, I made him shoot unlimited fireballs towards Mario like this. Just make sure not to set the fireball speed too high. Just like the fire snake, I created the fire tail, which makes him limited to only 4 fireballs. The tail also shifts over whenever a fireball has been shot. After they've all been shot, the flame chomp starts his blow up phase. After about 3 seconds he blows up, so watch out. Recreating the movement was a small challenge, as his pattern is quite random. But after some time I got a result I was satisfied with. Oh, and when he gets killed, he falls down together with his remaining fireballs. I also changed up some of the sprites at the end to make it look a bit better. He now also starts flashing whenever he's about to blow up, just to give the player some heads up. What you're seeing right now is a mock-up of the upcoming SMB1 volcano theme, which looks amazing. Let's take a look at some more of these. Here we have the mountain theme, as you can derive from the stony tiles and mountains in the background. We're also planning on adding a sewer theme, which would look somewhat like this. Another highly requested theme is a tower theme. Here it's pictured quite well together with the already added crawls. Now let's take a look at the Super Mario World Beach theme. I personally really love this one. Sewers in this style would look like this. And finally, here is a mock-up for the underground volcano theme in the SMB3 style. Looks pretty hot. That's all for today. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and if you want to see more on Super Smash Maker, then make sure to watch this video. Thanks for watching.